Welcome back to the Death Needs Dialogue Entertainment Network. This is The Depths of Felfan, Season 2, Episode 9, Brawl Below It All, Part C. Bertha just walks straight to the, the wheel and says, All hands to deck! Sounds good to me. Oh, the captain's mode is over. She, it's she's taken. not going to wait around. She's going to get it done. All, all 19 so crew? I'd rather not do with that. All 19 crew stomp their foot on the ground to stop, stop, stop. You've oh. heard of this yep. before. Maybe not all of them, but most of them. And you guys continue on. <clears throat> I was going to say, if this was going to a tie vote, we'd settle it in the ancient tradition of boulder parchment shears. Yes, <laughs> of <you> course. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> so, Captain, First Mate. And Rose. And Rose. Yeah. <laughs> Morales. Morale officer. Hoist a sail. We make way for Daran. Bounty Cove? Bounty's Bay. Bounty's Bay. Or Bounty Bay. Anyway, either way. We make port at Bounty's Bounty Bay. Go over there. Right, go over so there by now. <laughs> so you guys were still, uh, still running good about three or four days out. Um, and continuing on, if, um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's pretty much that. We can either uh, basically time skip ahead, or if you guys want to look in the captain's things. Oh, we're definitely snooping. No, yeah, I'm snooping I'll give, in the captain's shit. Snoop. Yeah, okay. I'm looking in the captain's stuff, obviously. Okay. So uh, a little while goes by, the, the night shift comes on. You guys have been up for most of the day. You guys, uh, you can retreat captain back to the captain's quarters. The first mate's quarters in the same area, but a uh, different room, different side. And uh, captain's quarters are filled with not so many uh, lavish things, but he seems to have a lot of uh, collectibles. That seems to be a, a captain's thing. Right up right the alley. Yep. And uh, you see all the papers on the deck that you're destined for uh, Del Ron, the port of Bounty Bay. You see on there as well that... Uh, Rooms are usually taken at the uh, the White Daisy Inn, just in town. We already have accommodations laid in. Yep, seems to be a common place. You see some receipts that he's uh, he's bringing out old things. It looks like you guys are. Uh, and what, and what was the captain's name? <clears throat> yeah, we never gave him a name. Um, Brucey Cyrus. It's, uh, Cyrus. Brucey Cyrus. Brucey Cyrus. Name. Brucius. Yeah, Brucius. 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 Brucius, by those who know him best. Brucius called ahead. <laughs> we, had, we have accommodations here. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, you see, a, you see a personal on that note, actually, since that came up really, really, really cool. cool like, uh, you know that uh, you do see um, a letter from a, a lady named Daisy. Okay. And. Uh, if you you read it, it's mm -hmm. fairly long, and it goes on to uh, say how much she enjoyed the first time they met when she came and uh, when oh, he came oh. in with his crew with the oh. white daisy in. She's gonna be sad. But uh, anyway, there you go. It seems that they, that they had some sort of romantic see. engagement. Oh, oh no! And uh, there's uh, also that uh, on the business side of thing. Is there, <clears throat> does, is there anything in his cabin that would look like it was meant to give to her? Roll perception. Because that is something that I feel like if he was on a journey and coming back there on, on purpose, he would have 18. planned for it. Are you there too? Also Wait, 18. Are you, are you in your room or did you go in with him? Are you both snooping the captain's yeah, stuff Yeah, also together? 18. Oh, fantastic. Okay. What about, what about uh, is Rose there also? Sure. Okay, no, they're no. all snooping the perfect. Amazing. Snoops. Roll for snoops? Yeah, roll for snoops. Absolutely. Yeah. So give me the numbers again. 18. 18. 18. So sorry. Perception. 23. 23. Oh, um, Damn, we, so yeah. you see, first off, let's go with, uh, with the, tw with the sorry, 23. Sorry, 19, 19. For some reason, you're drawn to the bed. You don't know why. Maybe it's just your nature. That'd be weird. Something <laughs> like that. But you look underneath the bed. Oh, there's a case underneath the bed. You pull the case out. It is a case that looks like it might fit a violin. Ooh, I open it. You open it. It is this wonderfully, wonderfully crafted uh, 
violin. Mahogany, deep, rich mahogany, mahogany. with gold, gold, gold mounts and, uh, and I don't know what they're called on a violin. All the mounts where the string goes through and the winding Frets things on top. What? The frets and the winders. The, winder. the frets and the winders? Yeah, okay. Well, all all those things, all the, all the, all the little pieces of metal, they're all gold and they're all finished and it has this very nice design and it's very shiny. And now it's yours. Oh, I wasn't stealing. Am I stealing it? You perceived it. Well, okay. I mean, you, maybe you should take it up with the captain, of course. But well, I'm gonna play it. Yeah, well, that's probably good enough, I would imagine. Well, I probably notice her playing a violin and immediately, yeah, it. absolutely, the yeah. Twenty-one for performance. Yeah, just she. You guys are going through the sheets on the table, and uh, I got you to roll. You were looking perception for um, to, to find something. I was looking to find a, if there was something that seemed like it was for Daisy. Yes, that's right. In one ear, in my head, yeah. gone after something else happened. It's okay. So yeah. you're you're doing this, looking around, and you're caught off guard by this wonderful peeling of a violin from behind you. You both look over by the bed, and you guys can see Sorry. Rose playing this. Oh, first, it's going to turn her. Where'd you find that, Toots? Mine. I didn't say. Anything about where'd you find it? Under the bed. Keep it. <laughs> you make a I lovely. So. You make a lovely sound. I make lovely noise. Thank you. <laughs> lovely noise. That was our new band name. The lovely noise. The lovely there noise. You, you need more. You need more people. And there's your goal right there. There's your side quest. Make a band. Make a band. <laughs> band two point. Find people on the ship that also play instruments. All the hurdy gurdy. Find someone who plays spoons. And whistlers. Then uh, you guys continue looking with the 18s easily. You find this uh, this box, this wooden box with this uh, uh, ribbon around it. It's kind of like an ovalish box, ribbon around mm -hmm. both uh, both major major bends, and uh, it has a little tag on it. And it says, uh, and it says Daisy. I will not open it. I will just put it in the drawer and acknowledge the fact it exists. Okay, oh, well, sounds man. good. <laughs> I'm actually looking to check on the cabinets for uh, weapons. Like, yeah, I, I was going to check for more, but I just figured that would be the first thing I look for. Yeah, absolutely. Because sure. um, that, that, that note got birth with inner feels. I'm doing things I just have to do, like find a find weapon. Okay, what do you need? What are you in need of? Uh, preferably something better than what I already have. What do you have? I have a rapier and a hand crossbow. So you're looking for something magical then? Possibly. Okay, mm -hmm. sounds good. All right, let's uh, roll percentile for me. Let's see what we got. The dice I don't have out. Forty-six. Forty-six. You do see an assortment of weapons, but they all appear to be pretty mundane. Perhaps they were on him during. The event where he got swept off. Ah, yes. Does he have a um, a grand chest in his in the uh, cabin, or is it just? Yes, there is a chest there okay. as well. Yeah. I'll go take a gander, see what he had in his. It's in... it's locked. It's locked. It's locked. Key presumably <laughs> on his person. Hmm. Well, I have a hammer. You have a hammer. I have a hammer. <laughs> okay. Let's see how much nice. a lock can withstand a hammer. It's DC twenty. DC yeah, twenty. DC twenty oh. to smash a lock. Yeah, so it's my strength. It's, it's a nice lock. It's a really fancy Good lock. Iron. Iron. Like in your, your natural twenty. No. <laughs> Boom. It was perfect. You didn't even harm the chest, and the chest I was going to say Wait. was immaculate as well. well Gold I, seams. I got a and everything hammer, like that. So I got the blunt side, and then I got the hook side. So oh, there you go. Right perfect. on that. Right on the hinge. The, 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 over there. Lock yeah. pops right off. Lock pops right off, and it opens. Clearly, up. it was master lock. Oh yeah. In there, you um, got it from Walmart. Dice. I didn't bring any dice. You go back up again. Roll a d6. D6? Yeah. Three. Okay, you got three potions of greater healing. Nice. In there. And money, of course. Um, you know, I'd say call it roughly about uh, 300, uh, 300 platinum. Well, in the quote of the meme, I am the captain now. I'm just going to leave it in the chest because it's my chest now. Yeah. And with that natural 20, 
The lock still works. No, nice. <laughs> it, 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 it wasn't just, locked. I hit it. Yeah, so, maybe it wasn't locked. But I, yeah, yeah, I hit it right. so perfect. That it just, <laughs> I'm not gonna relock it or anything. I'm just gonna make it look like it's locked. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're fixing a master lock number six oh four. It can be opened with a master lock, lock number six oh four. Punk. In addition to this, you guys, uh, there's a bunch of mundane stuff. Like you have, uh, there's um, on the high end of mundane things. There's a uh, that eye eyeglass, the scope. Oh, the uh, spyglass. Spyglass. Yeah. There's a spyglass there on his desk. I mean, there's various uh, things just that are gold, like gold goblets, gold uh, candle stands. You have a whole bunch of on the table well, all, the, all the all the map weights and everything like that, where you'd have like little miniature ships and stuff like this, and all so that. A telescope can just be. No, it's yeah. it, it's a what would you call it? Spy spy yeah, it's a spyglass. So so in the so book, it's a, a spyglass. Yeah, you think yeah. Yeah. Okay. you can put yeah. in so your like, pocket. But like, yeah, yeah that it could be. They, they make them like. I was gonna say like, telescope. Like, I'm pretty sure telescopes are long ones. Telescopes generally fixed. Yeah, I think that's the definition that it's a fixed if it's okay. And all a bunch of knickknacks. I would say he's got two to three dozen knickknacks in there. If you guys, instead of me kind of naming them off, if you, you can just write down one d six knickknacks that you one think you like or whatever. And they, they can kind of come he's up. He's really looking more for like a dark hooded cloak. How many how many sailors do I have appointed to manning like all stations on this particular boat with your skills and noticing how things. Are um, it takes a regular shift of twelve men to man the boat. Hmm. I wonder if as captain I can put in an offer to make it so each, uh, if any individuals on their off hours would like to spend time fishing to gather food, they could get an extra serving of grog for every half dozen fish they catch. Captain can do whatever he wants. Yeah, or she. Um. Yeah. That's right, she. Absolutely. Yeah, because Bertha so, may look like a dude, but it's a super stout woman. You do find a cloak, uh, a dark cloak with a nice hood on it, but it seems to be lined with fur, perhaps made for the colder environments of the sea. Feels like home, then. Or wherever. Yeah, I guess Bertha's going to go make an announcement to the crew that if any of them want to work it, um, or want to fish while... They're on their off duties for every six fish they catch, they get extra grog. All right. It's, uh, oh, they just eat the fish they catch. That's their choice. They don't get the grog at that point. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you see a few of them definitely start uh, uh, start beginning to fish. Um, I suppose the ship is moving. Yeah. I mean, you can fish so, while, the ship, while the ship's moving. Yeah, that's true. It's... Rolling. Yeah. Throwing out nets, whatever. And... Uh, just that so that way we don't have to worry about food for a bit, and, have, and we can make do for a while longer. And uh, the other thing you guys uh, noticed when you were going through the information, that the reason you were going to Bounty's Bay, for one, is to restock with food and yep. water and all those things. And uh, you guys were taking on um, stock, stock of, like, uh, pottery and things that you can sell merchant mercantile-wise, things of that nature. So... You're the captain now. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave it up to you on what you think you can sell and buy and do things. Like this, this. Oh, area, I sorry. I, I, what do we have on stock in the ship then? Um, on I stock, might... you're actually pretty low. You're going to pick up. The captain just came back from, uh, hence the 300 platinum in okay. his uh, in his thing. He just came back from a sale and he's okay. loading up in Delron. Delron is mainly um, known for its magical lumber, which uh, doesn't often get through anymore as of uh, late. They're known for wheat, lots of wheat, gemstones, as the uh, southern part of the island is uh, rocky and mountainous, they can dig for gemstones. And how many crew members do we have? Uh, 19. Then I will give each of the crew members a piece of platinum for the loss of our captain previous. Okay. Just to boost morale a bit more. Okay. All right. Constant That's, morale boost. There you go. It's a, it's a hefty... Congratulations. You yeah. just gave him a, like, a year's salary. Yeah, Which, absolutely. Hey, well, they lost their captain, and then they voted in a new one. Why is it fair that their new captain gets all the pay? And you don't want them to leave you at the next port. Exactly. So I'm uh, making morale go way up, so they like the like, new this captain. Guy, it's really good. <laughs> yeah, this guy's fucking phenomenal. But you do know that you're going to have to bring <laughs> at least uh, you know a dozen, 18 guys on. 
when we get back. When you, once, you, once you make land. You hey, they weren't here when the captain died. They don't get the plot. True, true. <laughs> and you know, Del Ron is uh, filled up with uh, lots of uh, strong back uh, country yokels that will do, that will follow orders. Perfect. So how, how many days would you say we're off from Del Ron? Oh, three, uh, three and a half days. Three and a half days? Three and a half days. Okay. So the, yeah, the uh, captain's moat goes well. You guys make some plans. Uh, check out the captain's stuff. Uh, the first uh, the first officer's quarters is not as lavish as the captain's, obviously. Probably I, better than where I was. I did Definitely. not join him to go there. I, no? just, I just went back to the wheel. <laughs> did you, you say in the captain's room? Quarters or I'd go up to on the deck, but take the violin and oh, play to the crew. She's, she's playing violin something. for me on the background. There you go. And you can hear it throughout the ship. It's just, it's I'm going to roll over your uh, roll, because that was, that was perfect. And just for giggles, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw high magic, detect magic. Just yes, detect magic. Do you have anything magical? On me? <laughs> no. No? Okay. So, uh, there is going to be a... Yeah, there's on the shelf in there, you it just looks like a pair of red knitted mittens, but they are magical, and they will uh, keep you from feeling the effects of the cold. Excellent. All right, and as the three days pass on uh, very uneventfully, the ship goes, there's music in the background, the crew is happy, morale is high, and you guys... On one bright early morning, ahead of schedule. We're eating fish and not weevils. That's right. That's right. Thank <laughs> you considered like a reskinned ring of cold resistance? Basically, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you guys can see the peaks of uh, the peaks of Del Ron, the eye of Karath itself at the very top peak, this uh, tower reaches up above into the sky, and you guys can see just this big eye on this tower. And there's this light. Even in the daytime, you can kind of see this slight glow to it, but it's, uh, it's, you guys can, you guys have been seeing it at night for probably about a day and a half. And you're finally there. You guys make Bounty Bay, and you get into dock at the town of Horizon. Now, Horizon is a town very flat. It's hard to get a good scope of the city because how flat it is. In this particular area of Dauron, it's flat land. Some desert portions, but mostly just dry, arid, uh, grassy grasslands. Grassy grasslands. Lush grasslands? Lush grasslands. There you go. I'll be your thesaurus. Thank you. <laughs> so I guess before we uh, leave the ship to make land, I'll inform the crew to uh, uh, remove their hats before entering the uh, accommodations as a sign of respect. Okay. He's gonna whip these men into shape. Bertha's disciplined. She's been she's been alive way too long. One, one of the uh, one of the shipmates speak up and he says, "Oi, does that mean my skull cap?" Is he wearing just it's like a do rag. Like a bandana over his head. Yes, Toss, that means your scholar hack, too. He nods. And then, uh... So you gotta keep some back. Well, I suppose you're, uh... You haven't bought anything yet, so that doesn't matter. There's no stock to unload. So you they're just, like, free, like rats yep. running off a ship. You're trying to find you some did, to take with us. You just gave them platinum each. Yep. They are going into the city, and they are going to spend it. Oh, absolutely. And within 35 seconds, they have disappeared amongst the, 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 the people in this city. And the town of Horizon, it has about uh, seven or eight docks. It's a fairly major dock. And you can see the city is flat and goes out, and there's multiple roads. You can see multiple businesses as it is. You can see, um, I was going to say welders, wrong century. Blacksmith. Blacksmith. There we go. Wow. You can see blacksmiths. You can see inns. You can see various other shops and people selling food on the street. It's loud. You can hear people talking. You can hear horses. You can see horses. Not see horses. You can see horses. You know, pulling wagons and whatnot. Uh, most buildings don't get over the uh, 
over a three level story, but far in the back you guys can see at least one building that is more than more than three stories high. Uh, Bertha will retrieve the gift for Daisy from the uh, from the uh, desk okay. and uh, proceed to the inn where we'll be staying for the for the time being. All right, you guys, Vega and Rose, what are you doing? I'm staying on the ship because I'm under the assumption that people don't like drow here. Possibly. Rose? This is nowhere near where home used to be, right? Uh, let's see. Let's see. No, this is across. You're closer. You're closer, but it's across the water. Across Narile's Neck, I think. Or not Narile's Neck. Across the cold water strait. Yeah, if you were to cross the cold water strait, you would be at the footlands of Brel, and you'd have to travel up and over Brel to where your homeland was. Although I guess when home wasn't her concern, she was probably looking for Galas, wasn't she? She well, said it. Sort of. Sort of she was just out for a good time. For that first those first couple months were just straight up no. good time. Then Bertha's gonna beckon bag at a couple. Mm. And uh, Frank, they will like you. Oh boy! Yeah. Frank, what? The Frank is also gonna <laughs> come up with yeah. that, but you finish first. You uh... probably would find a bar or something. I guess. So basically, okay. we're going. Oh, that's where you're going. <laughs> we're going straight to the end. So, yeah. And so, so Frank comes up behind you and he says, "Uh, uh don't worry about it. Ain't no one around here gonna hurt you when we're all together." I hope not. Don't worry, Tuts. I will let them. <laughs> I hope not. You guys leave the ship. You begin to walk down the uh, gangplank out onto the dock and up the dock, and you're met by a uh, shorter man, maybe about 5'2", five, 5'3", five, maybe. Uh, rotund around the belly, and he has his uh, ledger with him, and he walks up, and he says, Well, what do you have here? The black sheep, eh? Yeah, Toots. Um, I'm the new captain now. He lost out on sea. Ah, uh, new captain, old captain, just put your name in the book. Absolutely. Yes, she'll sign. It'll be 20 gold for the stay. Drops it. they pay it again in a week. So she'll write down Bertha Iron Lung. And as she finishes writing, she lights the smoke and carries by. Okay. He floats around, looks at it, takes, he pockets the money. He uh, looks you each up, up and down. And then as you walk by Vega, and he says, uh, don't stop no trouble, eh? Oh, you leave him be. He'll be fine. Glances back at you. Glances back at you. He's a good one, I promise. I wouldn't have him on board if he wasn't. He doesn't stop you or anything. Just a little bit mouthy. Let's you guys pass. Yeah, Bertha doesn't do mouthy. And uh, you guys move on into the city. And the city's fairly busy. There's a whole assortment of uh of people and races in here working moving things back and forth people uh living in this town of horizon it is hot if uh you have more than one layer of clothing on you're sweating oh God, I'm dying. you are sweating the sun is out you are not enjoying this so location clothes are off all. yeah puts down clothes is barely on and he's, he's just gonna like tie it on his waist so it's not like killing him yep absolutely for one, it's a bad <laughs> idea today. You, you guys can see that uh, Vega is, is not not enjoying this Is at it all. sunny, though, with the heat? Oh, yeah. It's oh, so you're sunny. Like, I'm, it's I'm it's dying, hot. literally. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the city is there. You guys walk off the deck. You're hit walking on gravel and uh, kind of like just dust-worn ground. The city is yours. You can see maybe one or two of your uh, of one of the shipmates there kind of just dis disappear off into the crowd one this way and one that way you guys are here in this mass it's Whoa. different from being on the yeah. boat Whoa, to be in the brothel they go to <laughs> <laughs> the amount of money they're about to make instead of being in the uh in a mass of water and ocean and wind you're in the cacophony of a city people talking laughing showing oh, stretching and like enjoying the ground not moving every two seconds there you go Rose also, because again, she's a wood elf. She's not used to the sea. It's true. We're the big city, really. Like, this would be the big Amazed. city. 
Yeah. It's like us going to New York. Yeah. Um, Bertha <laughs> sees if there's anyone nearby that might know where the uh, the the inn is. Daisy's. Uh... Daisy's bed and breakfast. No, you had a name. Well, I think it was a white lotus. Kale had a name for it. You just said it. That's that's funny. That if you don't remember, I'm going to hold you to it. <laughs> I just read it. It was, da- it was Daisy's. Uh... Talk to somebody. I'm gonna ask. Uh, wait, was um. No, I can't remember his name. Time to think. That's a lot of words. Frank. Frank. Was he in the room when when I read the? No. No. Okay. No. I'm, I'm gonna ask Vag if he remembers what the place was. Wasn't looking at that. <laughs> Ask one of the locals for daisies. Oh, water. yes. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll stop on the locals. I'm looking for uh, an, an daisies. Daisies. Uh... Oh, the captain told me. The old captain told me about it. It lost upon my head. It lost upon your head. Daisies. Daisies what? It's a, it's an inn. It's, it's a an town. inn. He looks over at his wife and he says, Yeah, I think you might be talking about uh, 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 the white daisy inn. Must be. Up there. The white day. That doesn't sound right. But I mean, it's, it's worth a shot. Thank you. And he do, gives you directions to two blocks up that way. Hang a right. Well, I mean, I, I, once I reach the tavern, I can just ask, is this where the black sheep is staying? And if so, do you know of another inn named, with the name Daisy? <laughs> or an innkeeper named Daisy? Yeah. Oh, that's the last one before the walk. Is the innkeeper named Daisy? Surrounded. I'm, I'm, I'm unaware of what the innkeeper's name is. Of course. Sorry. We had. And we'll, uh, we'll head towards wherever he pointed us in the direction of. They, they both give Vega an eye as he walks by. <laughs> he didn't say nothing. And you guys make your way to uh, the inn. It's just like you said, up two blocks and to the right. You guys can see the sign, the... Uh, Wooden sign kind of swings back and forth in the in the wind. It's uh, just a white painted daisy. Uh, I suppose I walk in and I walk right to the walk right to the uh, bar and just ask. I'm the captain of the black sheep, and I was wondering if this is where we had accommodations laid out for. Ah, uh, you're uh, here. You're here early. Uh, we uh, had some roughings. We had to make quick haste. You're gonna have to give it a day to get the uh, the the captain's room. Uh, it's it's out tomorrow, but you can stay in the other rooms for tonight. Sure, it's absolutely fine. And uh, the rest of you, the other two, the other three. Oh, they can take the room. I'll just mingle about the town. Is Daisy about? He he kind of looks over your shoulder and he just kind of nods in that direction. And he uh, drops three keys down the table for you guys. So you're not taking a room? No, no, I'm just going to mill about the town, figure okay. out what I need to find out. But uh, uh, I'll go to Daisy where he headed me in the direction of she's there. Okay, and as you kind of turn around, you can see that uh, this woman, this uh, this Daisy, you're a dwarf, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Not a dwarf. And uh, I didn't give his other race, I'm just assuming he was human. So you see this elven woman kind of dropping off two uh, mugs of ale on this particular table and then uh, walking up and putting the brown thing they put things on. A tray? Oh, the tray. The water. The carry tray. Yeah. The tray. She puts the tray on an empty table and then kind of walks up towards you. And she said, uh, did you say the black sheep? Bertha removes her hat and puts it to her chest. I'm really sorry to tell you this, Toots. But unfortunately, Rusius has unfortunately joined the other life. Perusius. But he left this for you. Oh, I've done forgotten his name. Oh. I'll she take did. it, though. She had, he... Unrequited <laughs> love. Bert, well, Bertha will hand her the box. Well. <laughs> he Bertha had it left for you, so. <laughs> <laughs> he must she, have been smitten with you. She, she, right there, she kind of opens it up. She takes it off. She takes off the wooden top and uh, just kind of like tosses it on the table. And everybody can see you guys are there. These, these seven, uh, seven scales they kind of look like uh, dragon scales, seven golden dragon scales. And she 
takes them in her hand, she flips them up, and they all kind of clink back in her hand. She drops the box to the table, she puts them in her pocket, and she says, Waylon, I'm um, taking a break. She walks out. Brenda's sleeping behind Bertha's going to be dumbfounded. Just... <laughs> this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Was the box pretty? If, for, if you were a wood elf, you'd be like, that's a nice box. I'm going to scoop up that box. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Sure. you're a wood elf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's some nice wood right there. No, it's a very, very fancy box. It's um, uh, similar to like the old, uh, old-fashioned Tupperware. You familiar with that? Like the first version of wooden Tupperware back oh, in the God. day? The OG Tupperware? Yeah, the OG Tupperware. Wooden Tupperware? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like, it's just, it has the, uh, mine, I have one at home. It's just this an oval box. And with an oval lid that just sits right on top of it. It doesn't seal or anything like that, but it was as sealed as it could get back in the day. So Bertha's going to go after her real quick. And now she's got questions. She remembered the black sheep, but not his name. Yep. Something wrong with that. Bertha doesn't like that. She's going to go after it. Yep, she's just, she yeah. just walked out the door. She's not too far away. Is in the water. <clears throat> nope, this is actual wood. Like oh, bent, wow. bent wood. Oh, I told you, how'd you remember the name of a ship, but not your, not your lad? It's an odd name for a ship, yeah? No. The Black Sheep? Not really. Well, I thought it was. I mean, someone, someone dies that cares about you. She'll even throw the letter at her. And you, and you just don't care like that. What is wrong with you? Who raised you? She shrugs and she says, well, we all have a life. I know. He'll actually put his hand on your shoulder, brother. People have their own traditions. But Some she... more unsavory than others. But she will scoop up the letter, though. You know. Yeah. So she seems to. She seems to have some care for it. She's reading it right now. Okay. She says. She looks at you and she says, "The man's a fool. He paid for whatever we did. He still treasured you for it." Hi. He did. And she pats the pocket she had. I'll be seeing you. <laughs> Bertha's she begins face, to walk away. Bertha's yeah. face goes black, grabs her hand and shakes it. Sorry. <laughs> and then walks <laughs> away. Just, just, God damn it. <laughs> the fucking fool. <laughs> the payment part was one, was one that we were unaware of. Yeah, no. We had no idea about that. Yeah. Like a legitimately fumbled on his words right there. This <laughs> Bertha just is profusely apologizing to her. Just, I'm so sorry. Come on, Bertha, let's go. It seemed a lot more serious. <laughs> Walks with baggage. Maybe we're better off without that captain. She gets lost in the crowd. No, oh, she's going to do something with that money. It wasn't okay. like seven gold pieces. No, it's just it was, it was just seven dragon scale. Gold dragon scale. Yeah. yeah. Horrendously valuable. Yes. She didn't yes, go buy a house. I'm aware. She, <laughs> yeah. could go, she could go start she a whole life. She could go going on a break. She's never coming she back. She's not coming back. She just she's going uh, to buy That's why I chased after her. I was like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> he gives you something that valuable and you don't care. Okay. <laughs> so, she leaves. You guys in the street there. People are kind of uh, not really watching. Ooh. The odd person kind what? of uh, looks in. Um. Depending on which uh, size dragon that scale came from, um, uh, so there was seven of them. I'm They're... assuming since she fit them in her pocket, it's got to be like that big. <laughs> so I'm assuming young dragon. Though. Yeah, we'll go young. Uh, each one, twenty five hundred gold pieces. <whistles> if it was an ancient, twenty thousand each. So she's about to go. Do she's gone. She, she wants to do whatever she wants. She's a queen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what? Like a, a little queen. You know what? Of her life. Because of who Bertha is, she's not going to go take that from her because it was a gift from someone who died. Yeah. She's just going to know that there's a lot of money walking away. That's a considerable amount of money. That's a considerable yeah. amount of money. Actually, what would I roll... For Vega to realize how much money that just was. What do you mean, how far away she is? <laughs> no, like how much money was given to her. You know, um, it's roll, um, investigation. Because I can go do something if he wants to. Or maybe history. Nine. Nine? No idea. You know they're pretty expensive. 
shaped shaped gold like that. If it is a dragon scale, you're not really really quite sure that it is. Yeah, that but if it is, dragon scale. You know, you've seen this guy's digs in his in his th in his um, ship. They weren't expensive as this, but who knows how much he felt about this one? Or maybe he didn't know they were. Maybe he thought they were just pretty. It's true, exactly. He was kind of dumb. Yeah, yeah but she still, you know, you can still get that. <laughs> She's sad. And, uh, yeah, you guys head back to the bar? The end? Yeah, I'm going to go um, up to my room and discard all the clothes I don't need because it's really fucking hot. It is really fucking hot. First, is going to go do captain things and try and acquire food, liquid, and uh, animals for the next part of the journey. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, I'm easily enough, you, um, you you find your your someone someone to do it. You did see a name, I guess, in some of the things where he usually buys the supplies yeah. from there. You tie up with that particular fellow. You get I'll, all your needful I'll things. I'll set it to pick up on the day we go to leave. That way we have yeah. it all fresh and not sitting on the boat for... Oh, one thing I forgot. Repairs. 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 That's you got to figure that out. When you go to... Um, That's something I'll One thing you take stuff, off... Yeah. Um, they send someone yeah. to go check it out, and they tell you that uh, they'll have someone up in a day to talk to you about repairs, how long it's going to take. All that, all that. Thank you, Toots. You're a goddamn saint. I'd kiss you if I, if I didn't smell like cigarettes. <laughs> Just constantly smoking. Yep. Every time one goes out, you see her light another one. And now that she's in town, she's stocking up. That's another thing she does. She goes to find the nearest tobacco distributor and just buys as many as she can. Uh, she says that the person uh, behind the, or not she, the person behind the behind the counter there, they say, um, well, what uh, brand are you smoking in there? Don't matter. Don't matter. <laughs> I'll be on the sea for long enough, it don't well, matter. Well, my nana, my nana up in uh, Beechwood, yeah, uh, it's a town a town of beach woods. Uh, is it called Beach Beach Plains or something? I'm the DM and I can't remember the name <laughs> of the city, but I think it was uh, Beach Plains. My nana up there, she grows a great crop of tobacco, and you won't uh, you won't regret it. I got a little bit here you can have, but uh, you, I can't give it all to you. Can I light one right here? And he gives you enough to he'll, he'll, try it. She'll, she'll smoke one right now. She'll roll one up and smoke one. Oh, well, that's nice. It's glorious. That's nice. that's glorious. It's glorious. The best tobacco you ever tasted. That send word to Nana, I'll be by. The black sheep will be in town. Uh, it's more inland than that. Oh, that will be that eventually. Right. <laughs> and no exp any expense. <laughs> go to the end of the world for cigarettes. <laughs> First, again, <laughs> top of the line tobacco. For, but for now, she's going to like clear out most of what his stock would be if it's. Like, well, he's got tons of oh, stock. Okay, so like, I can't this take is all a, This is a city enough where they, they have shit. When you guys were there, there were maybe six or seven ships in dock already. Mm -hmm. So okay. this is a very, very well-used port. How much would, like, 100 pounds cost? Of tobacco? Yeah. Uh, 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 100 pounds? 100 pounds. Oh, you're going to have to talk to Nana about that. That's, 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 that's above and just beyond. From your, just from your store right here. Oh, I don't know. Oh, you, must, you misunderstand. I got enough. This is personal supply. I don't sell that stuff. Okay. I don't know if she'd be, even have that much for you. You know, she's so quite the heavy smoker herself. She grows it, I imagine so. Yeah, Do you uh, mean you wanted 100 pounds of her stuff, or just any Of anything. 100 pounds of whatever he has in stock. Oh, well, yeah, that I can... 100 pounds, I could probably... I don't know if you I know, got that much. That's going to need a... Vega being there, he's going to realize... You know that's going to need a cart to get delivered, right? Right. <laughs> it's going by, like... Becca. She, we, Bertha, can't, we can't carry that. Bertha just looks at him. Yes, I can. No, I'm going to say Bertha's by herself on this. Uh, okay. She's got an 18 this. strength. Yeah. She can carry it. And, uh, <laughs> well, hey, Bales, roughly. Yeah, she, she's, just got it, she's just got it packed into a massive sack over her. That's going to be about a... Uh, well, there's only 95 pounds back there, I guess. But I, oh, I, want to take, I don't want to take your whole stock. Half of it. We'll do half. Oh, All right. still make money. All right, tell you what, I'll give you, I'll give you 50, 50 pounds. You give me forty-five gold. Forty-five gold. That sounds like a good deal to me. Uh, that's right. a terrible accent. Why am I keep switching the? I keep copying. Oh, it, it's, it's, <laughs> re it's really hard with our, with our particular group. We all have that same problem where we, you know, you just kind of settle into <laughs> it. And but you just, just have fun with it. If we're having fun, everyone's having fun. I'll get this. Uh, 
uh, taking down one of my boys. Will take it down to you. And we're Thank having you, a tons. we're having a party later on. You know, everybody brings a little bit of their own tobacco. We fill up the house with smoke. <laughs> you got me. They are hot boxing. I, I, if I ain't there, my name ain't Bert Ironlung. All right, I'll see you when the lights go out. See you when the lights go out. When the lights come up. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there you go. That's pretty much all that. And uh, you still have to think about, um, you know, what do you want to bring on board? There's like another tobacco is a huge thing to sell yeah. as well. Well, for for the ship, it, it, I, I was buying that much, not even just for me, because I guarantee some of the ship crew mm -hmm. smoke as well. So there's but, that. On top of that, I need, I still I want to go look for food. Yep. I and want you, to look for. You got all that stuff. You got all the food that's going to be delivered when you guys. Uh, yeah, as we go to leave. leave. So next thing mainly is like uh, commodities. Yep. If you want to buy stuff like that, but we'll. Um, yeah, just kind of think about it in the back of your head for now. Like, I bought commodities. Yes. Kind of thing. So while you're out for most of the morning into the afternoon, uh, Rose and Vega and uh, possibly Frank. Frank. Possibly Frank, yeah. Well, after dropping off his uh, winter wear, <laughs> literally he's just going to show up wearing looks like a vest. Some slacks and a nice pair of boots with his right for his side. That's pretty well. Right. Okay. This is that's the most he can remove and still be socially available. Okay. Despite being a drow. And uh, Frank doesn't really change much of his garb. He's got he's pretty weather weather endurance. He's got his same cowboy stuff on. Consistency. But uh, all over the past three weeks too, you guys have noticed that he's been practicing with his weapon. And uh, I'm better at it. And he uh, kind of comes out at the same time and he says, there's uh, no whiskey in my room. I'm sure we can find something. I need to find a blacksmith too. I gotta show him how to, I gotta figure out how to make these little balls that fit in this thing here. Right, that blacksmith. Uh... Oh, you saw blacksmiths when we were coming in port. So. Yep. Shouldn't be too hard to find one. Well, for me, it's uh, not good because I, can, I can't really see right now. I'm nearly fucking blind. We need to make sunglasses for you. Some. Or we just, you know, come out at night. Uh, perception, see if I can find a black one. Okay, 16. 16, yeah, he's going to give you a hand too. He's not going to let you do all by himself. All by yourself. Rose, you, uh, what's your plan? Drunk. Drunk? Okay, you're yeah. already in the bag? Okay. Oh, yeah. So as you guys leave, I'll get you to roll um, performance with disadvantage. Me? Yep. Are you still playing your... Oh, roll one. it again. Double nat, nat ones. ones. Two nat ones? They just wandered out of nat one. Okay, so um, you don't hear any music. Is that you don't, because you uh, came in... And you she just did. just started just that is amazing that that lined up like that and she's already you don't even really see her you kind of heard a little bit of music but maybe it was like just tuning up when you guys were upstairs and then it was gone and then you knew it must have been her and you came down and she's nowhere to be seen oh no nowhere to be seen but you guys have things to do so you and uh, Frank you abandoned me I'm probably dead on the floor. <laughs> Whatever happens, she runs on herself. And you guys, uh, you guys go easily find a blacksmith. Frank spends uh, a little while there, a little while there, explaining this uh, this thing, the gun concept. This uh, this gun concept, and he shows him the little things that he has to make, and they kind of broker a deal and stuff like that. He says uh, he comes back, he goes, "It's gonna be, it's gonna be a couple of days for him to figure that out." So I hope the uh, damage to the uh, to the ship keeps us here a while. What do you got? Anything to do? I have no money, and I have what I have. Bertha, you got a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he he at least has one platinum. Did oh, you yeah. give him a platinum? Yeah, everyone yeah. got a platinum. Yeah. Okay. So you at least have one. A little bit of coin, you got ten gold pieces. All right. <laughs> I spent mine on liquor. <laughs> yeah. There you go. High shelf, high <laughs> 
And uh, let's I don't see. know about you, Frank, but I'm down for just quality food. I need a good meal. None of that hard tack and grog. Sounds like a good idea. Maybe we find uh find Bertha. Get this on the go. Probably down the merchant district to get the supplies. So you guys go down that way, you see a uh, just various look for the smoke signals. Yeah, yeah just look for the smoke. <laughs> various uh, meat carts, and it's a pretty big district. It takes a little while. Um, uh, you guys ask around. Yeah, we're looking for a perpetually chain smoking dwarf. She's short, by the way. She's only like three foot five, something like that. Okay, so short. She's of a normal short. Dwarf. Okay. Well, this area is primarily uh, human. Primarily uh, taller-ish people, elves and whatnot. So you're going to uh, tell them that, find somebody, and uh, they say, "Yeah, I seen her. She's uh, was in the in the market there buying things, and she went up the road for the, uh, somewhere up that way. Anyway, any gestures okay. in that direction." Okay. And uh, you guys go up, and about another 45 minutes later, you happen to see... Uh, you smoke uh, coming from the middle of the crowd. <laughs> yeah, as uh, as you... God, I keep forgetting your name, Bertha. Bertha. As you guys walk up on, uh, on Bertha in the middle of this uh, this here street. This here street? This here street. Is it Bag of this, Frank, is it, it's good is to this see you. Yeah, right, right no, between them both. It's this and then there's the other street over there. That's right. That's a real place, you know. Is it? This street. It's on the map. Street. Yeah. Oh, really? It's on the map. Yeah. Okay. So you can find it. Cool. Uh, yep. You find everything okay? Yes, almost everything. We're missing a couple things, but mostly yeah. the crew that's still scrambling about. Ah, uh, we've got time. Oh, we got so much time. I was told about a tobacco place I want to go visit, though. Okay. <laughs> Smoking's not really in Vegas for day. Because... <laughs> Pure, pure mind, pure body. Not really. I'm <laughs> just one of those. things that don't that don't generate heat because you know Arctic life. Mm. Gotcha. Okay. He does yoga at night. No. That's just After he started pillaging villages. Yeah. You see Bertha has like a kebab in her hand from one of the look like street Ooh, stalls. Where'd you get that? Two oh. stalls down that way to the left. Oh, that looks good. Frank, does that look good? I thought we were going to go get something, like sit down somewhere. Oh, we're going to get food. She finished, yeets it. We had Where? <laughs> concept in my family was called an appetizer. It's like a small taster. She before the main meal. She's going to pull one out of her pocket. Uh, pocket food. <laughs> <laughs> you have that one. I'll go get some fresh food. Suit yourself. <laughs> yeah, chicken soup like you. <laughs> And uh, you guys keep walking. You do find up finding a place. Um, kebab shop. Kebab, kebab shop. Fantasy, fantasy oh, you said desert, so my first thought went kebab. Yeah. <laughs> the shawarma kebab. Yeah, donair. Donair. You see this uh, one place called... It's a Canadian desert. What? <laughs> it's a Canadian desert with donairs. Why not? Smoked meat. Smoked page. Cured meat. And you guys see this uh, place called Rorks. Ouch. Rorks. Back said? Rorks. Just Rorks. R O U R K E S. You can see off in the alleyway, just a little bit down, there's someone hanging over a barrel and vomiting. No perception. Uh, 19. Eight. It's, uh, you notice that it's Rose. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, Toots, so oh, Toots, you come here. My God. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? I found a bar and I drank it. And you drank the bar? Yeah. I can't say I'm not proud, but you, you're you tiny. Don't, you don't remember anything, by the way. Oh, I have no idea. Who are you? Martha. Do I remember Bentley? Uh, you remember sure getting smell. to that first inn. You remember the, uh, the White Daisy? The White Daisy Inn. That's the last thing you remember. 
How did I get here? We were at the, we were at the <laughs> Daisy. I don't know. I went shopping and I found you here. Where is here? This, that, and the other street. <laughs> Are we quite a ways from the inn? No. We're about to go get some food. Come on, you haven't eaten yet today, Toots. Ugh, I, I you know. need food. No. You drank on an empty stomach. Who knows? Didn't you let, you've been on the boat for how long now and you didn't know not to eat on it? You not, didn't know not to drink on an empty stomach? Uh, okay. To be fair toast. though, what else? Earth is gonna like pick her up over her shoulder, fireman carrying her. So oh, that's that's pleasant. <laughs> to the restaurant. <laughs> so you guys she all. A little bomb that's yeah, fine. Earth has had worse. <laughs> you guys, yeah, her own vomit. Yeah. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> you guys all walk into the restaurant. This uh, this group, and uh, I get down before we enter. The yeah, since uh, when we got to enter, because your, of hands, class, your hands and feet are dragging down. Anyway. I'm not going to drag her into a high class restaurant. <laughs> Thank you. you guys go into these doors. You open them up, and uh, it's just, everything in this area seems to be made of uh, of wood. There's some stone, but there seems to be a majority of of wooden buildings. And this one in particular has these big wooden logs holding the building up, or holding the walls up, holding the roof up. And on the inside, it's uh, it's kind of dark and dingy. There's a uh, there's torchlight and there's some windows open, but it still feels this very dark and dingy kind of atmosphere. And on uh, on the right hand side, immediately. Immediately, as you go in, you guys can see that there's these two big bowls, and they're filled with these uh, uh, almost look like lobsters, a smaller kind of lobster, like a crayfish or something like, like that. A large prawn. Yeah, something like that. And uh, someone uh, meets you there. There's a little uh, little stand, and they wait for you to get there. And it's uh, someone fairly well dressed, not too many you know stains on her shirt or anything like that. And she says, a uh, table for two, four, three. We got a door up here. She, sorry, she's short. Yeah, I pushed through. I'll cast, I'll cast okay, levitate to you, rise up yep. a little bit. Frank's there too. So it's four. Thank you, Faga. Yeah. Oh, I misspoke the first time. Not you, a doll. You have a child seat. <laughs> and she, uh, she, she leads you in to one of the tables. You guys sit down. And uh, she drops... Uh, a menu on the table. It mostly has uh, seafood, mm. mostly, um, but there are some other things. Anyway, she uh, leaves for a few minutes and uh, comes back. And the smell, the odorous smell of seafood in here is seems to be a pundit. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. You know, she comes back. Uh, Frank orders some large hunk of meat. And uh, there's some, there's lots of different options. It seems like a very high class establishment. They do have a lot of seafood. I think it's gonna get like a variety platter. Yeah. So so is so is Bertha because that's okay. exactly what Bertha was thinking. Just like what can, can I get the food? most of? <laughs> Just rolls like already? a veggie soup and some bread. Okay. Sounds good. So you guys get that all back, and you know it's it's, it's probably the only time you've ever seen. Bertha without a cigarette in her hand. Oh, there you go. Interesting. She's, she's too busy. Got, no, she class. has class. She has class. Yeah, don't smoke at the table. Yeah, don't smoke at the table. Don't smoke in restaurants. Yeah, hey, morals. Oh, yeah. Wow. It came by quick. And uh, so you guys are sitting around the table and uh, waiting for this, uh, waiting for this food to arrive. And Frank kind of says. Um, well, it's going to take a little while for uh, the ship to get repaired, I'm sure. At least uh, three or four days. Yeah, that's what they told me. But uh, They told me they'd let me know when it was finished. Same with the food and the liquid and everything else. Do we have any other, uh, anything planned around here? There's a town nearby I'd like to visit, that's about it. I'd like to uh, visit some place too. Got my uh... beach plane. 
Where are you? Where were you going? Beach plane. Well, it's it's close to there. It's uh, it's it's a farm off in the country a bit, but that's pretty close to it. Yeah, it's uh, where where I raised all my kids, and I want to go see it, see what see what it's all about. I got something there I need to pick up anyway. Frank, I never took you for a family man. <laughs> says, well, uh, I've known you for how long, and you're not, a, and this is the first time I'm hearing about you being a family man. About two and a half weeks. <laughs> 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 exactly. Yeah. Bertha tries to act like everyone has been in her life forever. Well, uh, I wasn't much of a family man. I didn't do that all that well. All well, all gone now, anyway. But uh, you know, that's what I got. I, I got. I'd like to do that if uh, you guys are interested in that. It's it's about it's it's like five or six days away from here though if that's to and from. So it's it's not going to take a time. short period of time. I'm sure our crew will enjoy the break. All right. Frank, okay. I could be I could do to get away from the ocean for a while. And we're in no rush. We still need to find a contract to take on the next load to deliver to the next location. All right. Now you were. Uh... Right, it is really co close to, to Beach Plains. But uh, anyway, uh, some time passes. You guys get your food, you eat, and uh, you guys kind of... Are any of our crewmates in here? No. Okay. No, they're definitely not in this high price establishment. Okay. Um, and you guys uh, you guys paid for me a little more than you think it should be cost, but it was well worth it. The captain definitely great. paid, right? Did the captain pay? I mean, I'm the one with all the money, so... <laughs> okay, there you go. Probably, just, just, just one bill. I probably, just, the, I, I, I probably just put a, pot, a platinum on the table and walked. That would probably cover it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I would imagine so. Plus a tip. Yeah, yeah that was a tip too. Just... But as uh, you guys, then the next day, you wake up fully rested, everything like that. You, Frank, Rose. Hungover? Uh, Rose, you are desperately hungover. Mm -hmm. Not doing well at all. But uh, there's a wagon outside and some horses. You guys get on board and start making your way out of town. Uh, Frank seems to know where he's going. Seeing that Rose looks like absolutely trash, less than restoration. Hey, there we go. You feel much better now. Bert Bertha also brought it up a cup of coffee. Nice. Okay. <laughs> she downs it. <laughs> Bertha also so is, is Bertha's also drinking a cup of coffee while smoking a cigarette without touching with her hand. That's that's just skill. Yeah. Skills. She's been doing it for another video clip I got to show you. She's been doing it for like a hundred plus years. Legendary so, outtake from Seinfeld. As uh, nice. as you guys are moving, three or four days pass out in the country. Not too much happens. It is just barren grassland. As you guys slowly move uh, on with these uh, with these horses, eventually you kind of veer off the path onto a smaller one, and uh, the grass seems to get a little bit thicker after a few days travel up in this area. You guys can see a small farm here, small farm there, and eventually you come up past this one particular farm. And you, as the angle you're coming on, you can see the back of it behind the house. And you can see this massive tree, one half of it just kind of broken and sloped to one side, and the other half sloped and broken all the way down. And it's all black and rotted and burnt all the way up. As you look at the house, it's like a one floor kind of ranch style thing. And there's all the shutters on the windows are hanging off. Most of the windows are broken. The door's shut. But there's like very little um, shingles left. Very little siding left on it. Like it's been left to rot. And uh, just nothing. Like it's the, the time and the wind and the desolation of this environment has really taken its toll on this particular place. On seeing this thing, we're perfectly safe. Nice house once. And uh, Frank will say almost in a mumble, and he says, At one time it was. Bertha takes a long drag off her cigarette. So, what are you doing with it? I gotta get something on the inside. By all means, you need a hand, I need some loan. Well, Probably spend the night here anyway. Yes, we take light. off. And uh, so he goes. You guys walk up to the door. Yeah. Let him go first. I think. Yeah. He puts his hand 
on the handle on the latch of the door and opens it. It appears to be unlocked. And as he opens it, we're going to have to wait for the next episode. No! <laughs> I love that so much. I was expecting a good flashback. Not yet. It's, no. it's, uh, it's already... I was going to give a bit of one, but it's already um, Bertha, 53. Bertha 53, spent too so. much time... Uh... Thank you for watching the Death Needs Dialogue Entertainment Network. This has been The Depths of Felfan, Season 2, Episode 9, Brawl Below It All, Part C.